You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. And Greater Brockton this time is about candidates for the city of Brockton preliminary election. I have a new face to Greater Brockton, new face to politics, and that is Joanne Zygmunt. Did yes, I say it right? Yes, very good. Good job. All right, job. welcome. Nice to see you. You too. Thank you, Mark. Um, Ward 6, two years later, there were three candidates last time. Mm -hmm. Two of them are still in it this time, mm -hmm. and you're the new face. Yes. Why'd you decide to run? Do you know, I've lived in Ward 6 my whole life, so over 30 years, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like the pace of change just, it, it, it's not fast enough for me. Mm -hmm. um, there is now actually, a couple days ago, they started doing some work at McKinley Park um, with some state funding, which is really exciting. But for the 33 years that I lived in Ward 6, very little has been done to the parks and playgrounds. Um, we've had some road improvements. I know there's budgetary constraints on that. Um, but I feel like we could just do more and we can do better. And in particular, I grew up in the village. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved to the Brookfield area around about 1990. Um, and the village is, used to be such a fantastic community, and people talk about it all the time. I mean, I remember going to the local bakery there every Sunday, getting my lunch meats, getting my bread, and I want to bring that back to the community. I really think we can do a lot more to become business friendly, and I think Montello is a great place to, um, to do that. There's a lot of contaminated land there, so it's, you know, it's limited in terms of what you can develop there. But there's no reason why we can't do creative things as well, like elevated gardening boxes um, where community members or senior citizens in our ward can come, or even from the whole city can come and you know, enjoy, enjoy the outside space. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm running because I, I love Ward 6. You know, I, I want to live there my whole life. I have lived there for 33 years, and I just feel like we can do better. Well. Village, I asked both of your opponents about. Mm -hmm. You're the third one, so I can reveal it. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that village you're talking about. Yeah. I went over there. I had friends. It was the best place you could get a low-cost beer when mm -hmm. I was in high school because I'm dating myself. I used to go with a friend from the east side. Mm -hmm. But uh, the church was there. The church changed hands. The mm -hmm. Lithuanian church changed hands. Mm -hmm. um, it's still a church, luckily. Mm -hmm. Okay, but... I remember the bread. I remember different restaurants. I think it needs a good cleanup, personally. Absolutely. For me, I would get a whole brigade of people and I would clean it up. Absolutely. Um, but it's been tough. The downtown has the focus. Campello has the focus. Montello, some of the folks yeah. I know in Montello say Montello doesn't have much of a focus. The Montello Business Association, yeah. I've been to some of the meetings, and we're kind of like on the border. We're not quite down, even though we're mm -hmm. downtown, we're on the edge of downtown. Mm -hmm. We're in Montello technically, mm -hmm. but we're kind of forgotten right here where we are, this, this area over yeah. here. So what's your background, Joanne? What, what, what your schooling, education, sure. work? Things sure, like that. sure. So I, um, I went to what used to be called St. Edward's mm -hmm. um, down near the village, um, St. Edith Stein now. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to an all-girl Catholic high school. Um, my parents were very committed to um, education, teaching you more than just academics, but particularly community service and faith as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they sent me to, to those Catholic schools. And then I went to Boston University mm -hmm. and got a degree in political science. And then from there, I went to, I actually moved to London, England, and mm. got a master's degree in urban planning. Um, so that's my academic background. Um, some of the specific things that I worked on when I was doing my master's included, um, the fancy term for it is the use and appropriation of a specific public park in the London area. But it was a, it was a study looking at, at that time, um, a lot of development was happening uh, related to the Olympics in London. And they were taking, they were adding to public parks, they were taking away from public parks. There was a lot of construction, a lot of public land and private land being moved around. And so part of my work in my master's was looking at what the community thought about that and how, whether or not they felt like they had any say in the matter um, and whether they felt like they could, were actually participating. Because there was a lot of talk about community participation um, and not everybody was actually believing that that was happening. Um, and then I spent um, some time as well while I was doing my master's studying urban, ag uh, urban agriculture in Ghana. Um, so I was over there um, looking at how uh, a small group of people in Accra, the capital of Ghana, um, a really heavily urbanized area, um, were actually doing agricultural activities in the city and supplementing their incomes with it. Mm. Um, 
so that's my academic background. So um, do you like what you see with the city planner and the blueprint for Brockton and the community input and stuff like that? Is that something if you got elected, you might focus on and work with the, the city planner as a city councilor? Yeah, absolutely. So part of what I do now, so I, I wear two hats right now. I'm both a small business owner of a consulting company that works mainly on environmental engagement issues, um, particularly sustainable water management. So I work a lot with um, nonprofits and public utilities to encourage people and businesses to use water wisely. Um, but I also am an operations director for a nonprofit organization called Green Camps, which teaches kids about the environment um, and ecology um, and sustainable living in general, but also um, helps those camps become more efficient in how they run. So looking at um, whether they can reduce their energy costs, whether they can reduce their water costs, could they actually be supplying some of their food for the kids from their own gardens, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So for me, what I'm really excited about in this, in this opportunity to represent the folks of Ward 6 on the City Council is that I feel like I bring a lot of the, um, the entrepreneurial and, and creative spirit that comes from the nonprofit sector and that comes from startup businesses. And planning is an area where you can do the, the really fascinating thing about planning is that it's not just about building stuff, right? It's about the people making the city. Mm -hmm. um, and when you do participatory planning and when you look at things like spaces for outdoor growing areas, then you're not just talking about beautifying a specific piece of land, but you're actually talking about creating a place for people to come together, get to know their neighbors, supplement you know, the diets that they're eating. Um, some of the gardens that I was involved with in London, they were actually growing um, ethnic foods, foods that weren't commonly available in London, but mm -hmm. that some of the cultural communities in the area wanted to showcase and highlight and teach folks about. Um, so planning is, is big for me um, and doing it creatively. And Ward 6 is a very residential area, it is. so there's, there's, there are open spaces, there are parks. Um, one thing that's being talked about now, big issue, um, is the sports car parks. Mm -hmm. That's been talked about for years. Mm. Okay, right now, it seems like all of a sudden, it, some people think it's a new Oof. invention, but it, yep. was, it was talked about. I, a long time. I go way back. I've been actually in this job 23 years. I'm a lifelong resident. Mm -hmm. A few, few more years than what you're talking <laughs> about. But um, what do you think of that whole idea? What have you heard? You've gone out and knocked on doors. Yep. You've talked to people. Yep. Is that a big issue? Are there other big issues? What yeah. are you hearing as you're going out? So I think um, the idea of a sports complex in Brockton generally, I think, is well received. I think people are excited to see something positive that's happening at a large scale commercially in Brockton. It's not as controversial as things like the power plant, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I think the sports complex is a, is a great idea. Um, I went to the meeting that we had in Ward 6 where we spoke to residents, were able to speak to the, the developer um, and his team. And there's still a lot of unanswered questions. You know, they haven't done the traffic study. A lot of folks in that area are concerned about the impact of traffic. Um, the Howard Street Bridge is already really crowded. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they did a little bit of maneuvering with the lights there and adding in. Um, but it's still, you know, it's, it's accidents happen and it's a concern. Um, so traffic is definitely something that I think we need to watch on that project. Um, a lot of the residents are also concerned because a piece of, a chunk of that land is actually forested at the moment. So it would have to be raised in order for the sports fields to go in. So there are a lot of folks that are concerned about the displacement of wildlife there and not just from a green outdoor environmental point of view, but actually from a practical point of view in terms of rats and mice mm -hmm. and where, you know, the, the, and you've seen that actually in developments in Ward 6 where, you know, people all of a sudden get rats in their backyards because of disruption of land, like where the Franklin School used to be, for example. Right, right, right. Um, so, so I love, I love the idea of a sports complex. Honestly, I would have probably rather have seen it in a different part of the city, someplace where it could have handled traffic better and maybe been a bit more accessible from the highway. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm in support of it for Ward 6. I think it's something that people can be excited about and something that we can look to, um, to showcase in the region. Okay, I'm going to ask you, the, I guess, the tough question in a mm -hmm. sense. And I, they gave me the five minutes, so I want to make sure I give you two at the end. What would you do different than the current city council? Your slogan on the 
the sign, on your button, on your literature, it says time for action. Yep. What would you do differently? You're the challenger. There are two challengers. Mm -hmm. There's an incumbent. He's in his first term. Yep. So I think my business background um, and the um, sort of less traditional sectors that I've been involved in will really help me look at some of the problems that we're having creatively. One of the areas that I would really like to look um, look at citywide is how we can make Brockton a little bit more business friendly. I know that commercial tax rates are high. We rely on that for revenue. Um, so it's probably going to be unrealistic to decrease those. But I know that a lot of businesses, whether they want to expand or actually come into the city, often face a lot of challenges with licensing and permitting and that entire process. Um, sometimes they don't know which department to go to. They go to one department, they get sent to another, they get sent to a third, and it takes a very long time. So one of the things I think the council should look at um, is, is how to do that, how to make it more business friendly from that point of view. Um, I also think that uh, we need to look more towards um, private citizen participation in our ward um, and try and get some resident groups together and some neighborhood associations to start applying for grant money as well, particularly for the parks. Um, you know, there are a lot of private companies that give out lots and lots of money to improve public spaces for kids and for adults. So I think we can do a little bit more in terms of engaging folks in our ward around these issues to make people feel like they have a say in it and they actually have power um, to implement that sort of thing. So I got the three minute. Mm -hmm. You get two of them. Okay. Phone number, website, all of that, and yes. you can pitch directly to the voters. Forget that I'm here. Okay, fantastic. Okay? Hello, my name is Joanne Zygmunt. I'm running for Ward 6, Brockton City Council. Um, I believe that my business background and my sort of less traditional experience um, in sectors that uh, aren't really represented on the council will bring a lot of fresh and new ideas um, to City Hall. I think that um, I think that we can do more and we can do better and that Ward 6 has generally been underrepresented these past couple of years. Um, and I want to change that. So I respectfully ask for your vote on September 19. You can reach me anytime to ask me questions, share your concerns on 508-649-3479. I also have a website, joanneforbrockton.com. That's J-O-A-N-N-E-F-O-R-Brockton.com. It's not on that sign. I thought it was. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Um, and you have all the information on your card. I do, You'll yes. You'll be going around walking. I, I, I'm seeing all the different signs popping up in Ward mm -hmm. 6. Um, do you have any events coming up that you need to promote? Did you, you did your fundraiser. Everybody's, I did my everybody's fundraiser. Everybody's done one round of fundraisers. Yes, and yep. You never know if there is a second one, right? Exactly, yeah. So at the moment, I'm really concentrating on getting out on the doorsteps, trying to meet as many people as I possibly can. Because um, I just I really want to get the one to one with as many voters in well, Ward Six. Well, we're looking forward to talking to you some more. We're hoping we're going to get it together a debate. I heard some Great. talk that uh, some of the some of the candidates are trying to get together and have a forum mm -hmm. right in the ward. Mm -hmm. So I wish you luck. I was a candidate myself a couple mm -hmm. of times for offices. Maybe and we'll I'm a see you again. Committee member. I like this. This is my job. Yeah. It's much <laughs> better sitting on this side of the table. So thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, wish Mark. You luck. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linder, your host. And stay tuned for more events. This is my Greater Brockton line. I have to say stay tuned for more candidates. I usually say events, faces, people, and places. How is that? So, so used to doing it with 300 shows. Mm. Um, we want you to be educated citizens and look for the best candidate to represent you, whether it be the city council race, the school committee race, the mayor's race, or the councilor at large race that will be coming up in the November election. So be an educated voter. Watch Brockton Community Access channels 9, 12, and 98, and we will see you at the polls on September 19th. Thanks for watching.